This video is about the Doppler shift for sound, and specifically where does that equation that relates the original frequency to the Doppler shifted frequency come from. Uh, it's sort of not obvious how we know which velocity goes on the top and the bottom, and when I was getting ready to teach this topic, uh, I spent over an hour trying to just wrap my head around what was happening and make sense for myself uh, of how to understand that frequency equation, and so that's what we're going to walk through in this video. So the first thing that I need to do is just introduce a lot of notation that's going to show up. Uh, so V is the speed of sound, um, probably in air, but could be in whatever uh, material we're talking about. Vs is the speed of the source, whatever it is that is making the sound. Vo is the speed of the observer or the listener. F is the frequency being emitted, the frequency we would hear if nothing was moving. Lambda is the wavelength of the original sound. Uh, v prime is the perceived speed of sound by the observer, so the observer might think that sound is moving through air faster or slower than it actually is due to somebody's movement. F prime is the perceived frequency of sound. This is, in the end, what we're trying to figure out. And lambda prime is the perceived wavelength of sound. Uh, and I think of this as a person looking from the side. Uh, so to illustrate this, um, here, this dot in the center is our source that is emitting sound. Uh, each of these circles represents a crest of the wave, of the sound wave and the distance between these two crests is the wavelength. So here, the source is sitting still, and the distance between crests is the wavelength. Uh, over here, this is supposed to represent a listener. Now suppose that the sound source is moving. Over here, our sound source is moving to the left with a speed Vs, and we see that the distance between crests over here in the direction that it's moving that those sound, those peaks of the sound wave have gotten squished together. Uh, and so this is the new wavelength lambda prime um, that I think about as visualizing from the sound, from the side like this. Okay, now that we have all our notation, uh, the plan is I'm going to determine v prime, f prime, and lambda prime, and then I'm going to use our, u, our normal sort of uh, equation for relating these quantities v equals f lambda, I'm just going to write that equation down in terms of these new variables. I'll do this for a source moving and for the listener moving. Uh, so first, a moving source, a stationary observer. Uh, over on the left here is just all those variables that we defined a moment ago. Uh, so I'm going to think about the source moving towards our observer. First thing I determine is that the perceived velocity of sound by our observer, v prime, is the normal velocity of sound v. And this, this right here is where I personally get tripped up. This is where I tend to make a mistake. Uh, so I, I want to think of this like the source is throwing a ball or something like that, in which case I would think the speed is greater due to the moving source. The reason that doesn't work here, the reason v prime and v are the same thing, is that what we're talking about, what's moving, is a disturbance in the air. So the fact that the source is moving doesn't do anything to the air. As soon as the source emits a sound, that sound travels through the stationary air at its normal speed. Uh, so V prime equals V. There will be a new wavelength. It will be the original wavelength minus whatever distance the source moves towards me before it emits another wave, before it emits uh, the next cycle of the sound. So lambda minus Vs times T, where capital T here is the period. And I'm going to rewrite this in terms of velocities and frequencies. So the original wavelength is the original velocity divided by the original frequency, minus Vs divided by the original frequency. Because uh, capital T here is just the period of the normal original sound. So V minus Vs all over F. Uh, the new frequency, I can't write that down yet, that's what we're trying to figure out, but I can impose V prime equals lambda prime times F prime, 
and plug in my expressions here for v prime and lambda prime. Doing that, I get v equals v minus vs over f times f prime. If I rearrange this to solve for f prime, I get that the new frequency, the Doppler shifted frequency, f prime, equals v divided by v minus vs times the original frequency. So again, it's the speed of sound divided by the speed of sound minus the speed of the source multiplied by f. And here this minus sign is because the source is moving towards the observer. Uh, I'll leave it up to you to convince yourself that if the source were moving away from the observer, we would get v divided by v plus vs. That's an exercise for you. So there is the moving source. We see that the source's speed, vs, appears in the denominator of our frequency equation. So now let's let the source of the sound stay still and let the observer move towards the sound. So here we do have a new perceived frequency of sound. So the source here is emitting sound waves. They are traveling towards the observer at a speed v. But because the observer is running towards the source, those sound waves seem to be getting to the observer extra quickly. And so the perceived velocity from our observer, how fast the observer thinks the sound is traveling, is v plus v0. The wavelength, the new wavelength, is just the original wavelength. If I view this picture from the side, our source is not moving at all. And so the distance from one peak to the next is exactly the same. That does not change just because our listener is moving. So I have v prime and lambda prime. Time to relate them through our normal uh, velocity, frequency, wavelength equation. So v prime is v plus v zero. Lambda prime is just lambda. Uh, again, I'm going to rewrite the wavelength in terms of the original speed of sound divided by the original frequency. And if I rearrange and solve this for f prime, I get that f prime, the Doppler shifted frequency, is equal to the speed of sound plus the speed of our observer divided by the speed of sound, all times the original frequency. Again, as an exercise for you, try to convince yourself that if our observer was moving away from the source of sound, then we would get v minus v0 divided by v. Putting it all together, if we have uh, a moving source, we tend to write this equation as just v minus plus vs. That's our way of saying it's the same equation. We just have to think about whether it's a minus sign or a plus sign, depending on whether the source moves towards or away from the observer. Uh, same thing if the observer is moving and the source is standing still. We write it with a plus minus in there. If both the source and the observer are moving, we just combine these two equations and we get v plus or minus v0 divided by v minus plus vs, all times the original frequency. In this case, if both objects are moving, you just think about the effect of each movement independently to figure out each of these signs. So in this case, just because the sign on top is plus does not automatically mean the sign on the bottom is also plus. You have to think through the fact that the observer is moving, what's that going to do? Would that movement alone be a plus or a minus? And then going to the denominator, think about how the source is moving. Would that movement all by, all by itself show up as a plus or a minus? Uh, so this is how I understand this, is, this equation. This is how I am able to come up with it that makes more sense to me personally uh, than what I've seen in the textbook. Uh, if it works for you, great. Uh, if not, then hopefully you can come up with your own way of making sense of this equation.